First and foremost, thank you for showering all the love on our Ask Programming's part one. As I mentioned before, during the part one video, there were so many questions that we had to break up the video into two parts. And this is part two of Ask Programmers. Also, I'd like to thank all of you for taking us to 10,000 subscribers. It's a massive number for us and it really motivates us to create more content. So if you have not hit that subscribe button, hit it and also hit that bell icon so that you get notifications for the next video. The first question is from YouTube comments. So it says, I love your Python tutorials. Waiting for other languages too. What is your favorite programming language, bro? The question is from Asmita Shrestha. So, uh, you must be wondering, it must be Python, but it's not. I actually love JavaScript uh, because, uh, not because, you know, there's a preference that I, I believe that JavaScript is better than Python, but because it is the programming language I learned first uh, when I went into professional software development, and it's a language that I've always stuck with. In fact, we, we are planning some tutorials on JavaScript or, you know, we have a series on JavaScript on the programmer's website and you could see apps or videos on JavaScript coming soon. So definitely JavaScript is uh, what my favorite programming language and it's a language that I will never give up on. Uh, one is by Karthik Udainia. Uh, Udainia. So he says, ask programmers, when will you start making videos on application based or project based coding like for programming games? I, I understand that you want to start building projects and you know just learning and I, this is something that I've been saying myself that watching tutorial after tutorial is not going to help unless you get your hands dirty with programming. So definitely that is in the pipeline and you know first we want to wrap up the basics of Python so that when we build those project based things if you get stuck then you have high quality resources you can get back to. If you go to project based videos directly, then uh, you know, if you don't have good resources on the basics, we don't want you to get stuck. And that's why we want to finish all these basics videos first. Definitely, as you mentioned, we want to teach you uh, how to build projects and how things work in real life. Some of them are very different from the tutorials or you know, it's not as rosy as the tutorials seem to be. But yes, that is definitely in the pipeline. The next question is by a user called CIVOHD. So they say, will you teach machine learning on Python? Now, this is a question that we get a lot and you know, this is something that we ponder a lot uh, that should we go into more advanced courses like machine learning and data science and web development and all that. But what we've decided is programmers is always going to be for beginners and at least that is the focus right now. So we are uh, not going into teaching machine learning or uh, you know, more advanced uh, parts of programming. Th this helps us really focus our attention on beginners who are struggling with basic concepts and th this is a conscious decision that we have taken as a brand. So maybe in the future, yes, but for now we are focused on helping beginners uh, take their first steps into coding. Moving on to the next question. So it's from YouTube. Ria Shrestha asks, which text editor do you guys use? Uh, ask programmers. Uh, my favorite is VS Code and everyone in our team uses VS Code because it, not only is it uh, very simple, it's also open source and it's got this whole ecosystem of extensions and uh, community behind it. So whether you, if you're doing, uh, uh, if you're coding in Python, you can install the extensions for, for Python. If you're doing web development, there are lots of extensions for web development. If you're doing data science, then there are lots of extensions for data science. And so it is so customizable and still so simple. I don't know how, um, you know, how it's, it's kind of, I used to always believe that uh, Microsoft Visual Studio was one of the best pieces of software ever built. And I'm so glad that they've open sourced it and made it, made it lighter and made it open for the whole world to use. So yes, VS Code is uh, definitely our first choice of text editor and not just us, it's, you know, all over the world. VS Code has taken the world by storm and the community that um, that keeps on adding to it is amazing. So I suggest if you're a beginner or even if you're someone uh, intermediate or advanced, uh, try VS Code, it's amazing. The next question says, uh, I am working in an MNC, so multinational company. Uh, they do provide education and courses. I joined the programming world and started from there. In one of those courses, I found your course on Python beginner and started and followed your programmer's website. I learned the basics, sir, and due to being, I learned the basics, sir, and due to being a full-time employee, unable to manage the time. I'm expecting a few exercises in Python for beginners. Uh, 
Now, it's a great thing that you want uh, exercises and you know something beyond the tutorials and the little assignments that we give at, at the end of some of the tutorials. And if, if you're a beginner, then our uh, website has a dedicated section for examples. In fact, there's a dedicated header menu that says examples and you can look at the examples in different programming languages. However, I understand that you know many of these examples can be uh, like build a Fibonacci series or, or something that does not relate to a real problem but a more of a simulation of a mathematical puzzle. So that is something that we are definitely looking to change and we are going into more live projects. So sir, my question is about data structures and algorithms. I heard this concept and don't know what this is and what do we learn in this concept and where to start? This is a great question by Kushal Shah. So thank you for asking it first. Uh, yes, for beginners, you know, there's, there's so many buzzwords that appear on the internet and on, even in our content that it can be confusing, especially data structures and algorithms. You know, if for someone learning if else and for loops and struggling with these concepts, suddenly someone comes to you and says, learn data structures and algorithms, you know, go for competitive programming and it can be overwhelming. So, uh, Data structures and algorithms are more of an intermediate or advanced concept in programming. Basically, if, if uh, it is about optimizing your code so that it runs faster and does not consume a lot of resources. So data structures and algorithms basically trains your mind to uh, pick the right uh, structure for your data or, or you know how you can structure your data and algorithms basically focuses on finding more efficient solutions. For instance, if you wanted to find the sum of the first uh, 10 numbers, then you could say, you know, you could run a for loop from one to 10, and then you can add all those numbers up. But if someone told you to add the first billion numbers or the first trillion numbers, then this algorithm of running a for loop from one to a billion or a trillion probably will give you trouble. Instead, there's a mathematical formula n uh, times n plus 1 by 2 that will directly give you the sum of natural numbers from 1 to n. So this is an algorithm that will in, that is more efficient and algorithms basically is about building these kinds of efficiencies into your program. Uh, I hope this made it clear but again uh, data structures and algorithms takes time to learn. The next question comes from uh, Sri Mishra. Uh, he says, hello respected teachers. Can you please help us in writing Python codes to print patterns? It's a bit confusing. And also do introduce us with your team and tell us more about your Python passion. And your work is just, I don't see. <laughs> a lot of you guys have been asking us this question that you want to see pattern programs. Now I understand, you know, this uh, the fun of pi pattern programming. I did it myself when I was in college and uh, it can really help you get your head around the basics of uh, code because there's a challenge and you need to solve it. So definitely we are coming up with those kinds of videos and also challenges in our app. Stay tuned. Now another thing that you asked is uh, introduced to our team. Definitely uh, there's you know it's not just me there are people who help me write the script. There are people behind this camera who help me create these videos. There are people who design our website. There are people who write content. So there's this huge team of people that make program is possible. Uh, Obviously, and I'm the person that that is in front and that because I'm in the videos, everybody knows me, but uh, definitely I would love to introduce some of the team members and maybe we will plan something around that. So thank you for asking this question. Shout out to everyone in the programmers team. I love you guys and you do, do such wonderful work. I'm so proud of this team. Now about my passion for Python. Um, I don't really have a passion for Python or JavaScript. I, you know, and, and I feel that you, as a beginner, you should not build, or even as someone advanced, you should not really build an attachment for one programming language. Instead, have a passion for, for problem solving or for one domain of programming. So you could say, I have a passion for machine learning or I have a passion for web development. I have a passion for building enterprise software or mobile apps. That is a better way because, you know, say, let's talk about mobile apps. When I was uh, starting my career, people were building mobile apps in Java and uh, you know Objective C. Then Swift came along and changed the way we built iPhone apps. Now there's uh, then ja React Native came, so JavaScript was the way to go. Now people are building apps in Flutter. So the programming language will always change. And you know if you get stuck, if 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 I was uh, stuck with Objective C till now, I would probably be out of a job. So 
don't really get attached to one programming language. Something better than Python or JavaScript might come, come in tomorrow and you know, take the world by storm. It doesn't take too long. So yeah, don't be passionate about programming languages. Instead, try to find the niche that really attracts you and, and then uh, do research on which programming languages are popular in that field. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot because uh, it's always great to see that people have questions and people expect so much out of us. It's also a bit of pressure, but that's okay. I enjoyed this whole process of making videos and creating content. I and the programmers team are thankful for all these questions and all the motivation to build new products. Definitely all your suggestions are being uh, taken and we are building lots of products for you. Stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one.